Good evening, everybody. Thanks for tuning in to Dumb Out TV. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe button for brand new content. This your boy, Go About Short. Let me get straight down to business. Today, we finna talk about Kamikaze. Now, he was a group member with David Banner. They had the group together called the Cricket Letters. You know what I'm saying? They were signed to Penalty Records. They did their little solo albums, and, you know, them boys went on to do their own independent thing, but... Let me go ahead and give y'all the uh the breakdown before the group broke up. Now, Cricket Letters, they started back in like 95, 96. Both of them went to college. And both members, you know, they had degrees and they was real smart and stuff like that. And Kamikaze, you know what I'm saying? He really wasn't trying to be a rapper, but uh the flows came real easy to him. So, you know, him, David Banner, and uh, recent Bigelow, they all used to rap together. And, you know, both of the groups end up uh, going their own separate ways and starting two different groups. But they was all from Mississippi, and they all collaborated on albums. And Kamikaze got signed to Penalty Records early on off their first uh, four songs. They did a demo, and they had UGK. And they had Noriega on the album. And you know what I'm saying? I got them a big deal for like 200K. But the whole time, uh, the business was so cutthroat, them boys didn't even know that they they end up losing money on the deal. So they end up holding penalty records over 500K. So they left and had to come back broke. And they had toured all around with some big label uh with some big label mates like uh, Noriega, Fat Joe, the Loonies, stuff like that, you know what I'm saying? And uh, everything just went downhill, so, you know, them boys had to pick back up and get on their grind. And David Banner, he was a producer, so he used to uh, ship his beats and stuff out to Atlanta and get these Atlanta cats to jump on them. Like, you can see Bone Crusher right there in the video. You know what I'm saying? Him and Bone Crusher moved in together. And, you know, they started working on stuff. And he was working with Pastor Troy, uh, Roy Jones Jr., and uh, Mr. Magic, just to name a few. And, you know, at first his beats really wasn't even banging worth for nothing. He was selling beats for two, three hundred. And then his beats started selling for five and ten Gs. And then he blew up. And then Kamikaze... He couldn't ever get no solo deal. You know, after his first solo deal, word is, this all allegedly, that, you know, as soon as things was finna pop off for him, then the company started buying ass. They say David Banner threw a monkey ranch in it and messed the man whole deal up. You know what I'm saying? Because they say uh, David Banner has some inside hate, you know what I'm saying, towards Kamikaze for some reason. Even though Kamikaze, you know what I'm saying, wasn't even a producer. He was just an artist, you know what I'm saying? But every time he get a deal or get in a magazine or something, he always gets stopped. And he was just wondering why. And then, you know, David Banner, he was being so successful. And David Banner used all his old music to promote himself and get him deals as a solo artist, and he left Kamikaze out. And you know what I'm saying? When he started Big Face Entertainment, he didn't sign Kamikaze, but he used Kamikaze when he wanted to come back to Jackson and do his little shows. So he called out Reese and Bigelow and uh, Kamikaze, because Kamikaze, he never really had any big features. All the people that called him for uh features they all from mississippi nobody like no big time stars from nowhere else and david banner don't even try to uh secure features or nothing for his homeboy for his homeboy to get known and cricket letters is the ones that started it they put it on the map and uh kamikaze man he had a few videos and it was around that crunk era. And they tried to dress him out like he was a Atlanta cat or something like that. But you know what I'm saying? He was from the SIP. 
And, you know, when they used to try to make him say, hey, man, say you from Atlanta, he would say, nah, man, I'm from Jackson. And that's what was messing him up a lot, too, because, you know, David Banner, he started working with T.I. and, you know, Jermaine Dupri, uh, Slip and Slide Records, Greg Street. You know what I'm saying? He was working with everybody through the production. And you know what I'm saying? Kamikaze, he was strictly an artist. You know what I'm saying? So every time uh, he'd be in the studio or whatever, and David Banner have some big time out of town to come to their little studio that was in Mississippi, he would kick Kamikaze out of there and be like, man, I got to go do some work. And then he'll call an A-list celebrity come over there, and they'll get a beat. You know what I'm saying? And he wouldn't even tell him that, you know what I'm saying? He got uh, such and such coming over there, like Trillville, a little scrappy. You know what I'm saying? He wouldn't ever put his homeboys on songs that, you know what I'm saying, that would have got him popping. He kept all the good stuff for himself. And, you know, a lot of that music is just chopped up music and sampled music and people clipped off verses and all that Mississippi early music, it all got ripped off. Cause David Banner sold it to Baton Rouge cats, Pensacola cats, Atlanta cats, you know, whoever they will buy it. You know what I'm saying? Cause he was in the market with the Mississippi, Arkansas and uh, Texas. So he was trying to uh, blow up in all these markets and he was taking songs and taking people's stuff like Pimp C. He would sample his stuff and not even have it cleared like, like a pimp. That wasn't cleared. You know what I'm saying? He stole Pimp C's voice and he used it and then he started writing them in jail because he felt guilty and started sending them paychecks. But he really didn't have that song cleared. You know what I'm saying? That's just how uh, David Banner worked. You know what I'm saying? And all the good songs, Kamikaze, end up getting on. That was on uh, David Banner album. It was just for, uh, you know, song. Uh, it was just for uh, song clips. That's what word I'm going to use. You know what I'm saying? You know, like on the CD, they have uh, 12 tracks, but only three of them good, and the rest of them you got to skip. You know what I'm saying? He'll use uh, Kamikaze for tr skip songs. You know what I'm saying? He wouldn't put them on the major scene or none of that stuff. That's why you never heard of him. You know what I'm saying? Until now. He used to be in the Murder Dog Ozone. You know what I'm saying? He was on a lot of West Coast compilations. But like I said, man, he he hard to find. He do management now. You know what I'm saying? He rave out the scene. He don't make music no more. He just manage people. And him and David Banner so-called got a relationship, but David Banner got all his new friends, and he forgot about what, you know, what Mississippi stands for, the crooked letters. You know what I'm saying? David Banner made that name up. And you know what I'm saying? He disbanded the group. And he liked to make up excuses and say, oh, when well, we lost our deal, the people told us we couldn't use cricket letters no more. So we got to go on our solo names. But man, you ain't never put that man down. He had left both record deals broke. He the only dude in the industry that's been on countless of gold and platinum songs. And like hundred thousand song, hundred thousand album sold song, and he never got no money. He barely got shows outside of Mississippi. If he did, it was on the outskirts of Louisiana, or Texas, or Arkansas. You know what I'm saying? But he been on the road, but it was just on his major debuts, but not on the solo, because you know what I'm saying. He was blackballed by David Banner. Y'all let me know what y'all think in the comments about Kamikaze. Peace of mind.